Board Game Blogger here, set to review the card-driven strategy game Hearts and Minds Battle in Vietnam. Uh, it's developed by John Puniski. It's a uh, this is a great card-driven strategy. It adds a lot of uh, new mechanics. It really captures the feel of the Vietnam War uh, really well, I, I find. Uh, the North Vietnamese player just sort of keeps coming, keeps coming, and the uh, the Allied player has a, to make a lot of decisions on how they're committing troops. Because if you commit uh, U.S. troops, too many U.S. troops die. Uh, that's bad news for back home. And if, you, if you're committing too many uh, ARVN troops, Army Republic of Vietnam troops, then there's a chance that the government could collapse and the uh, stability could fall. This is a I think a really neat game, uh, you know, a lot of new developments on the card-driven strategy mechanics, but uh, unfortunately components of this game aren't the best. Uh, the box is pretty flimsy, it's, it's kind of, you know, already getting beat up here, I haven't owned the game that long, it's fraying, and uh, one of the things I like to do personally is, you know, I throw the uh, my games in the back of my uh, my car, you know, go drive, meet some friends. And I found the game is so flimsy that if I've got the windows down, the the wind will just pick the box top right off. And I don't know any other game I own that does this. So I have to actually lay it with the bottom face up so it doesn't happen. So that's it's kind of unfortunate. Uh, the cardboard pieces in the game are kind of uh, a little bit cheaper than some of the other other games out there and uh, they fray a little bit easier and uh, I mean th there are some good things. The map, which the map's got its own problems but at least it's it's cardboard here so it's not going to tear. Uh, some war game maps are paper and it could tear easy. See it's, it's not happening here because it is from cardstock. It's not mounted like some of the other games out there, but uh, say Valley Games is Hannibal's retails for $65, Washington's War retails for $60, this only retails for $50. Personally I kind of would have liked if they'd you know made a nice mounted board and some better quality uh, cardboard on the counters, but I think you're getting what you pay for, at least component wise. So it's 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 a little cheaper uh, than some of the other card-driven strategy games out there, and the quality of the components reflects that. The they, they don't really hinder the gameplay though. The one thing that really does unfortunately hinder the gameplay is this map. While it's you know the quality is fine with cardstock, it's just too small. When you're playing with the the units on there, the names of the provinces get covered up pretty easily, and you know you can't really fit everything on there. If, if there's two sides on a, uh, you know, both the Allied and North Vietnamese player has a bunch of units in a province, it can get pretty crowded. It's tough to tell what province they're in, but the worst part is it's tough to tell the province's name. And some of, some of the cards that, that drive the action will refer to a specific province. You know, maybe it'll refer to Quang Tri. Well, if there's the map's covered. I, I don't know, really know where Quang Tri is. Sometimes, it'll on the card it'll mention which zone of South Vietnam it's in, and they've broken the game down into four zones, and there's gameplay implications with that. But unfortunately, because of this, not all the cards are printed like that. Not all the cards say Quang Tri in Zone Four or something. It would be nice if the cards maybe had a little map pointing right where it was, so you could find it. What I end up doing is referring to the back uh, box, and there's a map here. But I mean, it's just kind of fiddly to then see, okay, where is that province? So I mean, they could, they should have made a bigger map. That's the biggest flaw with the components of the game. The rest are nice. The uh, the cards are, yeah, I mean, they're decent quality for what you're paying for for a card-driven game. So why don't we look at how it's actually played and look at some of the really neat new mechanics. Because uh, I really think this game captures the feel of, of the Vietnam era. Okay, I've zoomed in on the board and sort of just placed some units on the board to sort of show you how the gameplay would go. 
Uh, one thing that's neat about this game is it comes with a, a scenario booklet which lets you pick which year you want to start in and you could even predetermine which year you want to end in. So you can actually start any year from 1965 up through uh, 1973. So that, that's really neat which means you can play the game differently you know and for how long you want. If you play the whole campaign it takes about five hours but you could you know just play one year or two year and then try and and play better than history or you know better do better as the North Vietnamese or do better as the Allies and they've got uh, victory and game goals in there and there's there's two ways to sort of order of win the game uh, it can just be outright conquest so if a uh, North Vietnamese player conquers an area they'll add the, the red token Otherwise, it's considered uh, South Vietnamese controlled. However, just because it's South Vietnamese controlled does not necessarily mean it's loyal to the government. It's got to actually end up become pacified. So that's kind of a neat mechanic. There's kind of three stages of control. There's communist control, there's South Vietnamese control, and there's South Vietnamese loyal to the government control. And then the way you gain these controls is pretty interesting. If something's already communist controlled, uh, the allies have to move in and then try to, you know, kick out the communists. If there's AVRN with the allied group, so here's some ARVN, here's some American troops. If they all moved into this province, they could just spend a resource to get rid of it because there's ARVN. So they're better at decommunizing a thing. Whereas if it's just Americans, they can't decommunize a province uh, as well. I mean, they can, but there's a risk involved. Whereas for it to become loyal to the government, Americans have to be involved. You can't just have ARVN do it. Because, you know, all the different AVRN commanders, they're all kind of jockeying for power within the South Vietnamese government. So you actually need U.S. troops to make it loyal. And what would happen is, let's say the U.S. are trying to make this province loyal. So you attempt to do it by spending one resource point, and then you would roll the dice. You count up how many allied units are there, so there's three. So to try and make this uh, loyal to the government, the allied player would roll a dice. And if they get a two, that means it becomes loyal. And so... That's pretty interesting. The way the game gameplay works is if the North Vietnamese player can ever control 16 or more countries or provinces, he wins the game. Whereas if the allied player reduces him to four or less communist controlled, they win the game. That's sort of the outright win. The alternative way is you get uh, doves or hawks on the meter, depending uh, on the American uh, public's kind of support for the war. So it's kind of interesting that they've got this additional mechanic. Now the way the additional mechanic works is that the, it's always steadily moving up towards doves. There's a few cards and a few ways you can increase it towards the hawk side, but normally it just keeps going closer to dove. And the way it goes closer to Dove is for every U.S. troop killed. That goes up one on the Dove track. So you really don't want your U.S. troops killed as the American player or as the South Vietnamese player, you're trying to kill them. However, if the Allied player is only committing ARVN troops and they're dying, then the government can fall. And the, the way the government falls is you, you compare the difference between pacified provinces and dead ARVN for the year. And if there's more dead AVRN than there are 